Hello, my name is Tom Stapleton, Executive Director of the Wakefield Community Access Television Station. And today we have Senator Jason Lewis with us, who is going to bring us up to date on the past month and all the things that have been going on. Welcome. Nice to see you again, and it's been a while. Thank you, Tom. It's yeah. good to be back with you. You know, it must be nice, uh, and congratulations on another term. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's, um, that's a nice, uh, nice little feather in your cap. And, and I'm thinking that it, it's great because now, because you have some programs already in place, mm -hmm. and now you can continue on with them to, uh, to, make, to go further with them rather than, than having them stop and, then, and somebody else picks exactly. it up. You know? Well, yes, so. thank you. Uh, we, uh, I really feel honored to um, have been reelected uh, in mm -hmm. November and really thank the, the voters uh, in Wakefield for, uh, right. for their support. And um, uh, as you said, I'm very pleased that, because uh, that was really my first term in the Senate, so we've got right. a lot of things underway, and, uh, and we've certainly got a number of things accomplished. Um, but uh, there's a lot of uh, work still ahead uh, that carries over to the next uh, right. term, which I know we're going to talk a bit about, but exactly. it's certainly in yeah. uh, economic development for, the, for, for our communities mm -hmm. and for our region. Um, continued work on education, on um, health care costs, and uh, a number of other issues. So I'm looking forward to, never to uh, getting, yeah, never, there's always more work to do, but you try to never build ends, on what right. you did before. And right. I, again, I feel very honored and privileged to uh, be the state senator for this district. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a wonderful district uh, and set of uh, communities uh, that I represent. Well, we're all glad to have you back again, and, and that it's really good. Um, so it's been about a month now since the election. Uh, how do you see that shaping the year to come, and how do we and you as a lawmaker move forward? So, um, well, as we were saying a moment yeah. ago, um, you know, we really want to uh, build on what we've al already been able to accomplish uh, during the current legislative mm -hmm. session. Um, you know, some of the things that we, we got done uh, working uh, between the Senate and the House and working closely with Governor Baker, we passed major legislation to deal with the opioid crisis, right. which is uh, yeah. so devastating to our communities, trying to improve prevention and treatment and support for uh, recovering addicts, and I think we're making progress there, although more work to be done. Um, we also uh, passed legislation um, to expand uh, clean energy, uh, particularly offshore wind uh, uh -huh. development, uh, so that uh, was something that we did this session. We um, also passed legislation to uh, provide oversight of ride-sharing services like Uber and Lyft, you know, which are getting okay. more and more popular. Yep. So that's something um, we, we did. And actually looking ahead, I think we're going to have to do something similar to deal with, um, with uh, Airbnb and some uh -huh. of these uh, you know, uh, room-sharing services as well, which are popping up more and more and actually here in the Wakefield as well. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we did some good work, I think, for, uh, for veterans' uh, services as well and various other things. So what I'm doing right now is I'm reaching out to um, our um, municipal officials, you know, boards of selectmen and school committees and town managers uh, and uh, community organizations and mm -hmm. residents to get their input for priorities that I'll be tackling in the new legislative session, which starts in January. Uh -huh. um, so uh, that's uh, so I'm getting together now our uh, uh, legislative agenda and local priorities um, for the new session, which will which uh, will be um, each legislative session is two years long, so it'll start okay. in January and then run through um, 2000. Uh, what is that? 2017 and 18. Yeah, right. Wow, you've got some priorities here that you have to. Really get your teeth sunk into there to get going. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now, we understand that uh, the Massachusetts School Building Authority visited us here in Wakefield. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so very, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, obviously, everyone's aware of the new Galvin Middle School, uh, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, and I'm, hopefully our students uh, and the families in Wakefield are, are enjoying that. And that uh, building pro school building projects in Massachusetts are typically a partnership between the local community and the state. And the uh, state agency is called the um, Massachusetts School Building Authority, the MSBA. And interestingly, um, many people don't know this, uh, every, uh, they get one penny of the sales tax. So anytime uh -huh. you purchase something and uh, you pay your sales tax, one penny of that goes to the Massachusetts School Building Authority and that provides a lot of the funding that they have mm -hmm. to help build and repair schools. So they partnered with Wakefield for the Galvin. The next uh, major project that is the priority for Wakefield is the high school. 
Um, right. I think everyone's yeah. aware that the high school building is, uh, is, has a lot of issues. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to make sure our students have a modern, you know, first class, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, facility and science labs that are appropriate to, you know, the 21st century right. education yeah. that our students need. So we are in the early stages of the process uh, to partner with the MSBA, and that's why they came out to visit the high school. Uh -huh. And we're very hopeful that we will be accepted into the program and um, because it's very competitive. There's a lot of right. schools yeah. all over the state that you know also are, are competing to be in the program. Once we're accepted in, then the process will unfold and um, it'll be a collaboration between the town of Wakefield and the, the MSBA to determine you know how to rebuild the high school. What the, you know, what the design options are. What's the most um, you know cost-effective and also the best solution for the for the students and the community. When do you think there'll be a uh, an answer to that? I mean, how long does that process take? I think we'll get an answer. Uh, you know, over the next uh, six months or so, okay. uh, yeah. whether we will be accepted into the program right now. Um, if not, we will keep at it, and uh, I'm confident we will get accepted into the program. You know. In, at some point, it's just right. a question, I think, of uh, how soon. Um, but I think the MSBA certainly recognizes that uh, Wakefield High School you know, does, does need some substantial um, work. And um, so that, um, you know, that's, it, we, just got to, um, we just got to get officially into yeah. the MSBA program. Well, one, of the, one of the thoughts just came into my mind was, uh, now the Galvin here in Wakefield was done a couple of years ago now. Mm -hmm. And now there's talk about the new high school uh, getting into that program too. Does that, um, in other words, because they did the Galvin, do they feel as though that the other, the high school, in other words, will that be able to be considered too because they're so close together? You know. Yes, I don't think it I precludes. Think, um, yeah, I think the the way that the Mass School, school Building Authority looks at projects is on their own merits. Okay. So yeah. it, it, it's really independent of the fact that, that the middle school was done. Um, I think they look at the high school, they, they, you know, what they've been looking at and what they, mm -hmm. you know, there's been a very extensive uh, analysis done, but including the, when they came to visit, they look at the, the condition of the building, okay, yeah, they yeah. look at the systems, the building systems, they look at the educational needs, they look at the enrollment growth that's projected, they look at this, the, um, where, where this, the, um, the condition of the science labs and other facilities, and based on all of that, they then make a decision about, you know, is this, is this, uh, uh, you know, a, a very high priority that we should immediately uh, okay. start to yeah. address, or can it wait a bit longer? And obviously, myself, along with um, Representative uh, Paul Broder and Representative Donald Wong, who, by the way, were also reelected, and so uh -huh. very happy to continue working with them. You know, as the delegation for Wakefield, we'll continue to advocate as, yeah. you know, as vigorously as we can to the state um, and the MSBA that. The Wakefield High School should be, um, you know, accepted into the program, so we can get the, this process going. No, I understand the high school. Uh, uh, the accreditation for the high school is is marginal right now because of the way things are. Does uh, that have any effect on? That it? would get factored in as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that would be another factor in terms of uh, the the urgency and the prioritization of the project. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any other uh, priorities, educational priorities, that you'd like to talk about? Uh, so right. yes, yeah, so um, one of the um, my, one of my main priorities ever since I was first elected um, is has been to update the school funding formula. Um, mm -hmm. It's known as the Chapter Seventy oh, yes. formula, yeah. and that determines how much each community gets in state aid for schools, and that's mm -hmm. a very big part of the budget that um, you know that that uh, every community receives from the state, including Wakefield. And the problem is that that formula was determined back in 1993. That's a mm -hmm. long time ago. The world has changed substantially, and we really need to update that formula to reflect, you know, mo what it really takes to educate a student today. You know, te new technology, yeah. um, new ways of teaching and learning. Healthcare costs, of course, are so much higher today right. than they were in the past. Um, special education needs are more complicated. So I um, filed legislation a few years ago that created a foundation budget review commission. It was a mm -hmm. blue ribbon commission, bipartisan. They looked at this issue, they took testimony from all over the state, and they came out with their recommendations a year ago that said we absolutely need to update the formula and it needs to be modernized. And so now I'm pushing hard to get those recommendations implemented by the legislature and the governor. The challenge is that 
it would lead to substantially more money that the state would have to put into Chapter 78, okay. as much as a billion dollars, actually. Yeah. And so there is concern about, um, you uh -huh. know, how do we fund that? And, right, you know, right. do, does the money have to come from other parts of the state budget or would there be some kind of new revenue source? Um, so we're trying to work that out. I think the answer is to implement the recommendations over, a, say, a five-year period and mm -hmm. kind of phase them in. Um, and um, the, the state Senate, I think, has been actively trying to, to do this. And I'm, I'm hopeful that this legislative session we will work with the House and we will get these implemented. And it, and it could result in a pretty significant increase in Chapter 70 funding for Wakefield. Right. Um, it will help other communities too, but you know, it'll, it, it's something that could make a real difference in terms of um, helping the town you know, meet its, its needs um, uh, in the schools. Um, now, the governor just cut a billion dollars, is that right? Um, uh, it wasn't quite that bad. Uh, he, he announced cuts uh, I mean, it was about, all... about 100 million. 100 million, which, oh, okay. Uh, obviously, 100 million dollars is a lot of money, yeah, um, yeah. but the, the, in the total state budget is about 35 billion dollars. Oh, okay. Um, right. Unfortunately, um, it, 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 did, it did affect some programs that are very important locally. Yeah. Um, for example, it inc we had some money in the budget um, for um, to purchase supplies of Narcan for mm. the Wakefield Police and, and, and uh, Fire Departments. You know, that's used to uh, resuscitate somebody after an overdose. And mm. um, it, that money was one of the things that, um, you know, was cut. Uh, we also had some money in the budget for um, some improvements to the public safety building um, that also, you know, is, is cut. Um, in Melrose, we had money for a, a coordinator for the Substance Abuse Coalition there. That, yeah. was, that was cut. Um, housing Families, which is a local group that helps um, families who are facing uh, ho homelessness. They do wonderful work. We had some money in the budget for them that was cut. So, you know, it's so it very yeah. important. And, uh, you know, even if these aren't large sums of money, you know, people are counting on that and in their budgets. And this is already the middle of the fiscal year. So right. the reason we're particularly um, upset about this is because the state's revenues right now are actually tracking pretty close to what we had anticipated. So it's not clear that uh, there was any need to, to make any cuts right now. And that's yeah. why a lot of uh, folks in the legislature have, um, you know, have been critical of the governor in, in making these because we said we, we, our view is we didn't feel that these were necessary right now, that the yeah. revenue picture mm -hmm. is actually okay. Um, so we'll see. The legislature in January may try to restore some of this funding. Okay. Yeah. That's always a process. It's yeah. always a process. <laughs> Budgets are always a challenge, just like it is in the town, just like it is for families yep. with their budget. Mm -hmm. um, the state budget is typically an annual process, but then there are times like this during the fiscal year where there may be um, you know, either cuts that are made or maybe yep. even sometimes a supplemental budget that's passed. So that's what will probably happen. The legislature will take up a supplemental budget probably in January or February to yep. see if we have the revenues you know, to restore some of these cuts. Um, Okay. I, I hope we can. It does uh, seem like hopefully that might happen, but you never know. Not yeah. guaranteed, unfortunately. No. Right. All right, switching subjects. The past term you served as Senate Chair of the Public Health Committee. Will you serve in the same role this coming year? Uh, yeah, it, 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 it has been great uh, yeah. um, uh, opportunity and a privilege to be the chair of the uh, Senate Chair of the Public mm -hmm. Health Committee, and we've done a lot of work this session on, on health-related uh, right. issues. Um, a lot of my focus has been on trying to improve um, focus on prevention and wellness because, you know, if we can do a better job of reducing the rates of preventable chronic diseases, right. um, things like um, certain kinds of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, um, uh, heart disease, and um, certain kinds of cancers and others that are, that are preventable, we can, not only can people live healthier, more productive lives, but we can also bring down health care costs. So um, I certainly expect to continue to be very involved in that work. Um, you know, uh, programs like the Mass in Motion program, mm -hmm. we have the um, yeah. Wakefield um, Melrose uh, is moving. That's an example of that kind of program, uh, that kind of, uh, eff you know, effort. So I expect to be very involved in that going forward, although I won't know which committee that I'm going to be chairing next session until um, early next year. Okay. Um, yeah. Because the Senate president, we, we will have to um, elect a new Senate president, right. uh, and then the Senate president will take, uh, ask each of the senators, you know, what their preferences are 
um, work it out in terms then. of what yeah. committees you'd like to chair or be uh, involved in. And then I'll share my preferences, and certainly public health would be one of my one of my areas of, of interest. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very interested in education. I'm very interested in um, you know labor and workforce development issues. Um, you know um, a num number of other issues as well, economic development. Mm -hmm. So then, based on all of the what all the different senators' preferences are, uh, the Senate President uh, sort of, sort of yeah. make, makes those assignments. Um, but I'm, I'm certainly, regardless, I expect to be continue to be very active on issues of health and health care and trying to work to contain health care costs and improve the quality of mm -hmm. care, particularly around prevention. Another area around health care, actually, that um, I th I'm hopeful there'll be a significantly more focus on next session is mm -hmm. mental health. Yeah. And um, you know, we talked a bit about what we've done in treat terms of substance abuse, mm -hmm. but mental health is another area that is a real challenge, um, you know, for our for our communities. And um, uh, there's still, although there's supposed to be parity in terms of care for mental health as there is for um, regular physical health, in practice, that's not the case. Yeah, people yeah. still struggle to get the the treatment they need to get you know the insurance coverage to. Um, you know, to find providers that can that can help them. So we we, we need to focus on that that issue. Um, what about some of the public health priorities that you may have in, in with uh, respect to the youth, as far as marijuana mm -hmm. goes, mm -hmm. as far as tobacco goes, and all those things? I mean, uh, as you know, uh, the youth need some help in that area mm -hmm. because they don't have the experience behind them to understand. Mm -hmm. where this can take them right yes we um, you know it's 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 a uh, it's an environment that our yeah. kids are growing up in today that um, you know can be very challenging they are they're under a lot of different uh, uh, stresses and um, and uh, they unfortunately in some cases turn to you know whether it's alcohol or tobacco or, or marijuana or other mm -hmm. drugs you know and we are seeing trends where you know kids at a very young age you know sort of 11 12 13 14 are starting to use these these substances yeah. mm -hmm. and you know it's one thing um, to use as an adult um, but when you're a kid your brain is still developing you're much more susceptible to addiction um, you're much more susceptible to harmful um, mental and physical health impacts of the from from any of these substances and um, unfortunately a lot of these companies um, you know, do do market and, and, and yeah. target youth, even though they'll say they don't. So um, I've been very committed to trying to do um, to do what we can to keep these um, substances away from teens. And uh, you know, tell the message is to wait until you're 21, until you're an adult. Um, the state senate actually passed legislation um, to raise the minimum legal sales age for tobacco to 21, which is actually what Wakefield has already done, right, and yeah. some of the surrounding communities, but some of them have not. Unfortunately, it didn't make it to the governor's desk, so we have to keep working on that. And as you are well aware, I'm sure our viewers yeah. are aware, there was um, the, the marijuana ballot question uh, did pass in November, even though um, it didn't pass in Wakefield, um, and I opposed it, um, but across the state it did pass. So we do have to implement the new law and I expect to be very involved in that as well, and making sure that while we implement it, the will of the voters is, is certainly respected, we have to make sure we also do everything we can to protect public health and public safety, particularly uh, you know, keep to try to minimize the use of marijuana by teens. Well, you did spend an awful lot of time on that, and um, you know, rightfully so. Uh, uh, it certainly does, um, it, it obviously the people in Wakefield felt differently, but um, that's the way it goes. And uh, I do commend you for the amount of time that you put in that, on that effort there. Thank so, you. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah. you know, I I had um, been chairing a special Senate committee on marijuana, mm -hmm. and I had gone out to Colorado, so I, I just have some firsthand knowledge right. around the, you know what the, some of the challenges are with uh, with this issue. So I felt it was important for me to be active in the debate. Yeah. And I shared my perspective and uh, some of the concerns I, I had with the specific details of the ballot question. Um, but now that it passed, we have to move forward. And I do expect yeah. to work with, uh, you know, our police chiefs right. and our public mm -hmm. health experts and our, um, you know, our our board selectmen members and board of health and the proponents of the ballot question. You know, all the different stakeholders to uh, now figure out. Okay, we're going to implement this new law, but let's do it. Thoughtfully, let's do it carefully. Let's yeah. let's hopefully be a model for the country in terms yeah. of how to do this right, mm -hmm. so that people, adults, you know, can get access to safe and legal and tested marijuana, 
but we do everything possible to not encourage the consumption of it um, or overconsumption, and we do everything possible to keep it out of the hands of uh, kids and teenagers. Yeah. yeah, that's the important part. That's right? the important part, I right? I myself. Um, now, I understand, uh, changing subject a little bit, that the Senate passed the organ transplant bill. Can you go? Oh, yes, and, and I think the good news is, I think yeah. as the, we're taping the show, yeah. I think the governor has uh, just signed the bill or is about okay. to sign it, so it should become law. And, um, yeah, it's something that um, the Senate uh, pa passed and the House also did, and originally it was uh, taken up by the Public Health Committee. Okay. So it was yeah. reviewed by the, our committee, and, um, you know, we had a public hearing for the bill, just like we do for all bills, and uh, I remember the testimony on the bill being very moving. Mm -hmm. And what the bill does is it says, very simply, that uh, somebody who is disabled cannot be discriminated against in terms of receiving an organ transplant. Mm -hmm. So we all know that an organ transplant, you know, if your kidneys are failing or your liver or another organ, that's, that's life-saving, an right. organ transplant. Yeah. And we have a system in the U.S. for determining the, you know, who gets the, the organ. We have a list um, mm -hmm. that's maintained for different organs. And there have been some cases, um, not, fortunately not really in Massachusetts, but there have been some cases in other states where somebody who had a, you know, like Down syndrome or another kind of disability was essentially discriminated against uh -huh. in terms of yeah. getting an organ that he or she needs to, to save their life. And, you know, my view is that th that people with disabilities, you know, should be treated the same as everybody else, and that should certainly not be a reason to be denied a, 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 an organ transplant. Um, there are various factors that are considered in, mm -hmm. in, in this, yeah. obviously, the, the ability to accept the new organ and to continue to live, you know, a, 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 a healthy life um, there's a, is considered but it should not be based on whether or not you, you're disabled. Right. So this legislation will make it clear that, in, at least in Massachusetts, you can not be discriminated against in, mm -hmm. in, in uh, receiving an organ transplant based on your disability. Well, I believe, weren't you a co-sponsor on this? Yes, I had co-sponsored yeah. the bill yeah. originally, and then, mm -hmm. and then um, when the bill was, uh, was heard by the Public Health Committee, um, you know, I was able to uh, help move it along. Anything else in this area you'd like to talk about um, as um, related not only to the organ transplant but the, uh, some of the medical things that you have? Well, I think the other, th the main thing in this area that uh, when it comes to health and public health yeah. is we have to continue to contain health care costs. Yeah. You know, we are very proud and rightly so, I think, in Massachusetts that we have the highest rate of, in, of insurance of any state in the country. We're very close to universal insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have very good quality care for the most part. Um, we have some of the best, obviously, doctors and hospitals and nurses in the, in the, in the world. But our costs are very high. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's hard to for afford health insurance when your co-pays keep going up and the um, premiums are high. And we're very concerned about that. It's a, it's a big challenge for our, our small businesses. Mm -hmm. It's a big challenge for our government, you know, both town government and state government. So we have been tackling this issue for a number of years now, trying to rein in health care costs. And my focus in particular has been on trying to focus more of our attention on, on prevention and uh -huh. wellness and population yeah. health. Because again, the idea is if you can reduce these rates of preventable chronic diseases, which have just skyrocketed in recent years, um, we can bring down health care costs. It's not, the only, it's not a silver bullet, and right, we right. need to pursue yeah. this with multiple yeah. strategies, but that's certainly one way. And um, you know, so I'm going to stay focused on, the, on that issue. That's good. Um, well, you have a few minutes left. Um, are there any other topics that you'd like to talk about in relation to Wakefield or Melrose or wherever this program's going out? Anything? Well, I, I would say, you know, um, uh, in addition to the work that I've been doing and yeah. will continue to do on education and on health care, you know, and public health, which we talked about, um, the other main priority for me has, has been and will continue to be what I would call local economic development, which mm -hmm. is supporting you know, our local communities in terms of funding for our schools, for local aid, um, for 
um, uh, local infrastructure, you know, we talked about the high schools, a good right. example of that, or improving improvements at the public safety building, or the improvements that we're making at Lake Quantipowit. Um, we're taking down the uh, those uh, utility poles at the north side of the mm -hmm. lake and putting those underground, and 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 that's a that's a project that's being um, partially funded by state dollars and local dollars, and um, and and also uh, local transportation is a very important yeah. part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the commuter rail. Mm -hmm. Very critical to Wakefield residents. We've been battling to improve the service on the commuter rail and the reliability of the service, and I'm going to keep at that as well. We've got to hold the MBTA um, and Keolis um, accountable. Keolis right. is the company that operates the commuter rail mm -hmm. for the MBTA, and we have to make sure they improve the quality and the reliability um, so that we can really count on our public transportation uh, you know, in this area. Well, I think that pretty much wraps everything up at this point. Uh, other than that, um, it's, it is the holiday season. Do you have anything special you'd like to well, say Well, I just uh, <laughs> want to wish you, Tom, and, and yeah. everybody at home, uh, you know, a Merry Christmas, a very uh, uh, happy holiday season, yeah. however they're celebrating, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and of course, a happy and healthy um, a new year, and all the best mm -hmm. for uh, 2017. 2017, wow. Wow, 2017, it's the year my uh, daughter graduates high school. Oh boy! I can't believe that that year uh -huh. is, is about to arrive. Where did um, that I, time go, right? Incredible! <laughs> I just feels like yesterday. She oh was in God. kindergarten, yeah, and uh, now she's um, graduating. And in fact, I think uh, tonight she's hearing uh, a decision from the college she applied to early, uh -huh. uh, early decision. So oh, that's great. Uh, she told me that's that was going to be tonight. So it's kind of nice we, when they get fingers that crossed. Call. We yeah, hope yeah. for the best. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure she'll end up. Well, lots of great colleges. I'm sure she'll end up somewhere. Mm. Typically, after after the Christmas break, the seniors, it just mm -hmm. things start to change. <laughs> well, I guess they start to hear about colleges yeah, or right. make their decisions if they're going to the military so, or other yeah. other paths and so uh, hopefully that decisions. they yeah. can uh, maybe relax a little bit a little bit more. <laughs> I think that will be yeah. <laughs> well thank you once again Senator and uh, it's really great and hopefully we'll be back in another month or so to kind of see where things have uh, have Good. gone from this point. I look forward to it. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much.